Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to cover up your ugly damaged wall in less than 30 minutes with a skim code. I'll be using a 14 inch blue steel drywall taping knife, a 16 inch stainless steel mud pan, and some thin down USG all purpose joint compound. This skim coating process can turn your walls from drab to fab. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you a skim coating trick you're not going to want to miss using a paint roller. Whether you have old beat up walls or just a hideous ugly texture, this technique will work for you. If you're new to the channel, my name's Paul and I've been a drywall and painting contractor for over 20 years. If you're looking to step up your drywall, texturing and painting game, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification to get alerted whenever I post a new video. Let's get into this video. All right, so these walls are super hideous. Uh, DIYer tried to remove some wallpaper and just gouged and tore these walls up. Hopefully your walls don't look as bad as these, but believe it or not, I'm gonna make these look perfect. As you can see, they're just torn up, beat up. Some of the brown paper showing from tearing the outside paper off the drywall when they remove the wallpaper. So it's gonna take a little finesse to get these even ready for the skim coat. I'm not gonna show you that whole process, just taking any loose pieces. I'll also be using a guards problem surface sealer, which locks down the torn drywall paper and seals the wallpaper adhesive. Even if you don't have wallpaper removed, you can still use this product. It's a great primer and ensures good adhesion. All you do is you just roll it on, either just on the damaged area or the entire wall like I did on this before applying the skim coat. All right, so basically I'm just gonna get the joint compound up there using my 14 inch taping knife. Just going over the whole surface and I'm gonna get it up there and then just smooth it all out once I get it up. I'm using my Werner walk boards to get to the higher sections of this wall and I basically work in sections. So I'm up high, getting up to the ceiling. You wanna pay special attention to the corners. You don't wanna get a bunch of mud up on the ceiling or anything, so you just wanna get it tight as you can. You wanna cover the whole surface on this first coat. I'm pulling away from the corners and just smoothing it out. And if you feel that the 14 inch knife might be a little too hard to handle for you, you could drop down to a 12 inch taping knife. And you can also use a stainless steel. It doesn't have to be the blue steel. This is just what I had available. So as you can see, I am lifting on the left and putting pressure on the right. That keeps that line from forming so you minimize any sanding you're going to have to do. And if you look, I have my finger on the side that I'm putting the pressure on, which actually helps lift the left side. Now, if you're going to go the opposite way, you want to switch that up. Right now, I'm just smoothing out. There was so much wallpaper left over, little pieces. Every once in a while, I get a drag or something. If you see me pick it out, it's no big deal. I'm just gonna go over it again and smooth it out. Let me know in the comments what kind of project you're working on and how bad your walls look. I mean, as you can see, these walls are already looking better. Just paying special attention to the corners. You want a nice, tight, straight corner when you're done. That sheen you see on the wall is from the guards primer. I ended up priming this whole wall with the guards. I have a video of that whole process and I'll go ahead and leave that in the description of this video. I mean, it's starting to look like glass already.
Like I said, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you that paint roller trick, which gives you a nice, consistent application of the joint compound. It's great for DIYers. You don't have to do any guesswork about how to apply the mud. The roller does it for you. So stick around to the end of the video for that one. All right, going to drop down, move the walk board down. A little tight. Didn't realize the homeowner was going to leave all this stuff in the room, but I just got to work with it. If you don't have one of these bucket scoops to get joint compound out, you need to get one. I'll leave links in the description to my Amazon store where I have all the tools that I use in every one of my videos. All right, again, here I am just getting the mud up. I'm gonna smooth it all out. Just a nice, thin, consistent skim coat is what you're looking for. You don't wanna ha have to sand off a big pile of joint compound. So you just go back over it and apply a good amount of pressure, but you don't wanna take all the joint compound off either, especially on a wall that's got a bunch of dings or scuffs. You want to be able to fill that. I'd say it's probably an eighth of an inch thick. Get some more joint compound. Again, it's thinned down to a yogurt-like consistency or a thick pancake batter consistency. Some people said they don't make pancakes, say that they don't know what that is. So yogurt is a good way to look at it too. As you can see, it covers all these little gouges and tears up without any problem at all. And that scratch is going to go away. I just need to pick out whatever is causing it. And even if there's a few scratches when you're done, you can come back and touch that up. Don't get hung up on getting it perfect as perfect can be. You can come back with a touch-up skim and make all those little teeny imperfections go away. But if you can catch a few things, you can save yourself a little time. Again, all this is completely getting covered. You don't want to leave any spots uncovered. That way when you go to paint, it's all a consistent way that the paint absorbs into the wall. If you just hit splotchy different spots, you're going to be able to see how the paint absorbs differently. But before you ever paint joint compound, you want to prime it first. I like a Zinsser 123 latex primer as my go to primer. There's another little thing. I'm going to pick it out of there. Looking like glass. Long stroke. Pressure on the left, lifting on the right. Keep them lines down. Just follow as you go. Again, I'm applying pressure to the left side and lifting on the right when I'm going in this direction so the line stays down at the bottom. Here, I'm put, applying pressure to the left and lifting on the right. So the line stays on the left when I'm moving to the left. If you're moving to the right, you want to do opposite. But once you get going with it, you'll see what I mean. You can reference back to this video or ask me any questions in the comments. Also, let me know in the comments if you're a DIYer, painter, handyman, contractor, 
Just kind of curious who's watching these videos. You can see this moves pretty fast. Be a lot easier if I didn't have all these boxes. Another thing, you always want to have good lighting. This room is kind of dark. So I've got these LED work lights that are awesome. It lights up the work area and it really helps you see any imperfections in your mud work. And it also works before sanding. You can bring the lights in and see exactly what you're dealing with and if you need to apply a little touch up coat. So again, I'm just getting the mud up there. I call joint compound mud. Don't get confused by that. Just kind of a slang with contractors. Back in the corner again. I also skim coated these painted popcorn ceilings. I'll be putting out some videos on that as well and give you a sneak peek towards the end of this video. So here I'm applying pressure to the right and lifting on the left. Just trying to smooth it out as much as possible and then you can spot any divots where you need a little more mud. Once you've got it complete, completely coated, then you can just move on to the next section. I like the 14 inch knife because if you use a smaller knife, it just kind of makes you work a little harder, but I can understand the 14 inch being a little hard to handle if you're a beginner. Move this light again. Now I'll get the lower section. It's a process, but if you just keep chugging through it, like I said, this, this whole wall takes less than 30 minutes. Get a little more joint compound. I do have another full bucket underneath this one already mixed up. So I'm just getting the mud up like I did previously and then I'll smooth it all out. It goes a long ways. You got to pace yourself. You don't want to overfill your mud pan or your arm is going to fall off at the end of the day. <laughs> hey, and if you guys have some better te techniques, let me know in the comments. I'm always learning. I like to use the paint roller trick if I've got two people. That way someone can get ahead of me rolling on the compound and then I'm just smoothing it all out. I did this entire project by myself. That's why I'm skim coating by hand. Applying pressure to the right, lifting on the left. I kind of did an experiment on this wall and didn't remove all the little pieces of wallpaper that were stuck. And I just applied the guards. And honestly, I didn't have a problem with that. I was pretty surprised. I, but I did want to see, kind of test and see how it works out. So. If you've got a hideous wallpapered wall like this, you can get as much of the big stuff that's peeling off, but you can leave some of the little pieces there and that guards locks it down.
Obviously, it might take you a, a little bit longer than 30 minutes to skim coat a wall. But the more you skim, the better you get. I would recommend if you have a closet or an inconspicuous area, practice in there first before you get out on your main walls. This is a huge wall. I do have another video of this project where I skim coated a smaller wall. I'll leave links to all these videos in the description below. It's a little difficult working in this tight area, but the job's got to get done. And I'm not moving a bunch of boxes back and forth, so I just got to deal with it. Applying pressure to the left, lifting on the right. You can see the line forming on the left side and nice and smooth on the right. I know I keep saying that, but it's crucial or you're just going to have a bunch of lines everywhere. Did a whole big repair with a sheet of drywall. I'll do another video of me just skim coating that new sheet of drywall. Be looking for that. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Paul and I've been a drywall and painting contractor for over 20 years. If you're looking to step up your drywall, texturing or painting game, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification. That way you get alerted whenever I post a new video. Here I am just applying the mud. I'm gonna come back and smooth it all out. Again, paying special attention to the corners. You always wanna pull away from a corner. You don't wanna have a big load of joint compound on your knife. You wanna keep it nice and tight. It might even be a little thinner up there. You just don't want to pile it up. No one likes to sand. So the more you pile mud up, the more you're going to be sanding. And um, what you want to especially do is make sure you got your wall pretty flat before you put a primer or a paint up. Because once it's primed and painted, there's no sanding it off. So make sure you get it pretty flat. And also, once you get it primed, you bring your lights in, and then you can spot any little imperfections, and then coat those, spot prime those, and then paint. That's how the pros get a nice, consistent skim coat, is putting lights on it, and then one last check after the primer's done. Get this thing out of here. Lordy. It's much easier when you clear everything out of a room. Getting close. Getting real close. Stick around though to see that paint roller trick for skim coating. Just a quick clip. I've only got about a minute of it to show you and I'll leave a link to the entire video in the end screen which is the last 20 seconds of this video we'll have a link to a couple of the videos pressure on the right lifting on the left you can see the line forming down at the bottom and it's nice and smooth at the top of the knife crucial I love skim coating walls and blowing people's minds when they come in and see a brand new wall for a fraction of the cost of tearing out and replacing. I know a lot of guys go, why don't you tear it all out and start over? But that's just crazy. Much easier to skim coat if you can. These walls were not too far gone. All you got to do is skim coat them. You tear them out, it's a whole nother process. This 
last little bit here. Don't want to waste none. Like I said, I got a whole nother bucket full below, but I think this is probably going to do it for me. I know this is one of my longer videos, but I wanted to show all the details for everyone in this video. I'm going to get this last section done and then that paint roller trick for skim coatings coming up. You can see the wall. It looks like glass, honestly. Just kind of working around this plug. Don't feel like messing with trying to get an extension cord and moving the light. No big deal. Just applying that joint compound, getting it consistent, and then I'm going to smooth it all out. By the time you get done with one wall, you're going to be so much better than when you started. Like I said, find an inconspicuous wall to skim coat or start the skim coating and then move out into the main room or just start out lower. If you put too much mud on, you can take it right back off. Just remember to put pressure on one side of the knife or the other. That keeps the lines from forming. And the more mud you put on, the more pressure you're going to need to apply to take it off. So you'll get your rhythm and skim coat like a pro in no time. All right, a little more touch up right there. Looking good, looking good. Smooth as silk. Uh, I don't know if you remember what the wall looked like. But, wow. That's the short wall I skimmed. I do have a video of that. If you want to check out a shorter video for practicing on an inconspicuous area. Alright, here's a quick clip of me skim coating the popcorn ceiling. Actually, it's a painted popcorn ceiling from the 70s. So, there's potential for asbestos. So, the best thing to do is encapsulate it not scrape it. I'll be putting out this video in the upcoming days, so be sure to check that out. And again, the skim coating paint roller trick is coming up. And there's the partially skim coated popcorn ceiling. As you can see, it looks like the wall, smooth as glass. Going to take a little touch up to make it perfect. But as you can see, this is much better than the popcorn ceiling. Get rid of the knockdown texture with the skim coat. We're using an inch and a quarter roller nap and some thin down joint compound. Usually takes two rounds of this to get a smooth wall. If you watch this whole video, leave a hashtag drywall tube in the comments. That way I know who's watching these videos. And if you want to step up your drywall, texturing, or painting game, be sure to hit that round icon in the middle of the screen now to keep up with all my latest videos. If you've got a friend that's a contractor or DIYer, be sure to share this video with them on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out my skim coating with a paint roller trick video on the left side of the screen.